What is up everybody, Jared here with CarBuzz.com and today I am bringing you a review of the 2023 Mercedes AMG EQE. Now there is a lot to dissect there. So the EQE model is Mercedes mid-size electric vehicle. So they've got EQ, which means they're electric models. The E means that this is roughly an E-class size model. This is the sedan. There is going to be an SUV model that is roughly the size of a GLE. You also have the EQB, which is like the GLB class. Then you have the EQS, which is available as sort of an S-class size sedan and a GLS-sized SUV. So we have the AMG variant, which is the most powerful of the bunch. Europe gets two different versions of this car, the EQE 43 and the EQE 53. Here in America, we just have one version called the AMG EQE. And you can spot one pretty easily by this grille. It's a little bit hard to tell because our car is all black, but this black AMG grille is meant to mimic the grille that you get on a gasoline powered AMG car with the chrome slots that are uh, heat laminated onto the grille. We've got these slick headlights. You also have a little bit of a different diffuser area down here that you would get on the standard EQE. Just like the EQS, this is a very slippery looking body. I kind of think it looks a little bit like a Dodge Intrepid, but don't tell Mercedes I said that. Um, it's definitely not the prettiest car that I've ever seen. I think that there are other electric cars in this segment that are definitely a lot better looking. I think the Porsche Taycan is better looking. I think the Lucid Air is better looking. But as you'll see, the interior of this car is really nice in typical Mercedes-Benz fashion. We've got optional 21 inch wheels. 20 inch wheels come standard. We've got Michelin Pilot Sport EV tires. So these are specific for EV models, but as we're gonna talk about a little bit later, this whole wheel and tire setup is going to affect your range. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. As for the actual wheel pattern itself, I think it looks really cool, but I think the 20s look really cool as well. You can probably see by the color of this brake caliper, it is a six piston brake caliper. It is a carbon ceramic, as you can kind of see as well. That is an available package. It's like five grand. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Honestly, I think you should probably just get the 20s, uh, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. You can see that it has that sleek kind of jelly beany design that first debuted on the EQS. We've got the hood does not open on this car, so we've got our little place to put in windshield wiper fluid over here. We've got our door handles that pop out. You kind of have to slide your finger across it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. There you go, the door handles pop out. And then around here at the back, we've got sort of our connected, almost like a bow tie looking tail light bar. We've got AMG letting us know that we have the AMG model. You get a slightly different diffuser, obviously no quad exhausts because this is an electric car. And as a specific AMG touch, you get this spoiler. And honestly, I really do like the spoiler. And now that we've looked at the exterior, let's move on to the cargo space. You use the Mercedes-Benz emblem right here, which also hides the backup camera to open up the trunk. I could not find a US EPA rating on the trunk size. Uh, it's 420 liters in Europe. And just to give you some context, uh, Porsche Taycan is about 407 liters. So this is a bigger trunk than the Porsche Taycan has, but the EQE does not have a front trunk available. There isn't much storage underneath the floor here, just a little bit for your fix-a-flat because this does not have a spare. You could probably put a charging cable in there, but at least my press car does not have it. So I don't believe that Mercedes is going to ship this car with a charging cable. I believe Mercedes is just going to assume that its customers already have one installed on their homes. And I wanna show you something that is kind of unique on this EQE that I've really never seen before on a Sinan. You get power folding rear seats. You get these two buttons here in the trunk. So when I push the left one, the left seats are gonna fold. And then when I push the right, the right is gonna fold. Never seen that before. And now let's check out the back seat, which is kind of a mixed bag in terms of comfort. 
So as I step on in, you're going to see that I have just over 38 inches of leg room, which is plenty. I'm not even close to touching the seat in front of me. The floor is mostly flat, so it's pretty uh, nice and comfortable back here. The materials back here are pretty nice. I like this sort of brown on the top here. We've got this really nice sort of metallic finish on the doors. I really love this. We've got heated seats back here, no ventilated seats available. We've got our own air vents and we do have two USB-C ports for charging back here. However, I think that these seats are a little bit bolt upright. This is the same issue that I had on the EQS. You can see that the bottom here is kind of tilted upwards and then this backrest is kind of fixed here. You can't really like lean back at all. So I feel like I'm sitting just like very upright right now. I'd really rather kind of recline like this and I just, don't feel that comfortable back here, even though this is supposed to be an executive sedan with a lot of comfort. And you can tell the headroom here is terrible. I have the sunroof open. We've got this dual sunroof option. So you have like a sunroof back here and a sunroof up front. And I'm only about five foot eight and I am almost touching the glass. If this sunshade were, were shut, my hair would be grazing the ceiling. So anybody that's tall back here is really not going to be comfortable. Uh, so that's just something to note if you are looking at the AMG EQE. Tall people are not gonna have a lot of fun back here. And last but not least, let's check out the front seat where you're gonna be spending most of your time. On the AMG model, you're gonna get these AMG specific seats. You can see they have the little AMG badge on here. You have the Afalterbach uh, AMG crest on the headrests, which is quite cool. You've got this really interesting headrest adjustment as well. So you can kind of move this in and out, which I think is kind of nice. Like it's kind of cool how this works. Uh, these are heated and ventilated seats and we do have massage, which is part of an optional extra package. They are very comfortable seats as Mercedes usually does. I do think that the bottom is a little bit stiff back here, but test them out, make sure you are comfortable in them. But honestly, I think they are really nice. You also get this AMG specific steering wheel. This is the same as what you're going to get in a lot of other gas powered AMG models. I'm gonna go ahead and start it up because this is going to give us our first taste of the AMG sound experience. So let's listen in. Warm. It gives you this kind of dramatic warm, as in as if it's firing up like a like a spaceship. I absolutely love that. I think that is super cool. There's not a whole lot different here from what we've seen on a lot of other Mercedes. We have our AMG drive control units. So we'll talk about this a lot later as we have comfort, sport, individual. We even have a slippery mode. I'll talk about that a lot. As you'll be able to hear, so right now I'm in comfort mode. I'm just gonna stop talking for a second. And then I hope you can hear that you get like a humming noise in Sport Plus mode. We'll talk about that a little bit as well. On the steering wheel, you can control this touchscreen and the gauge cluster as well. So this side is gonna control the gauge cluster. So right now I have classic. You can go to Super Sport, which is kind of like an AMG specific gauge. You can also have like a minimal understated, which I actually really love the look of. It's very simplistic. You can have your navigation up there as well. So a lot of customization that you can do up here. Very nice and easy. We've got our 12.8 inch central screen. This is a 12.3 inch screen. Mercedes told me that you cannot get the big hyper screen that takes up like the entire dash on any EQE model for the 2023 model year. Honestly, I do not miss it. I think that this screen is big enough. I don't on, I honestly don't need any more than this. I think it is just fine the way it is. And all of these controls get moved to like right here when you have the hyper screen which I think is a little bit annoying. So honestly, I don't miss it whatsoever. We also have a Burmester 15 speaker, 710 watt audio system as standard. Uh, there is no configurator live for this car, so I'm not sure if there's an upgrade on top of that, but we don't have it. We also have this gorgeous lighting as you can kind of see during the day. I have it turned all the way up and even in broad daylight, it still is pretty visible, which is quite nice. It looks gorgeous at night. It has all sorts of cool effects. So for example, when you raise the temperature, you're gonna get this pulse of red light and it does that every time. So watch this. Every, every uh, <laughs> temperature click, it goes up and then it'll do the same with a blue tick 
when you lower the temperature. I think that is so cool. I absolutely love that. We do have wireless Apple CarPlay here, wireless Android Auto. We can talk to the car. I do think that the ergonomics on this car are actually quite good. You can see here, I really love this cup holder design. Let me go ahead and take my cup out of it and reopen this because this does tend to close sometimes. So these kind of spin, so you can close these out and now you just kind of have like a storage area here as well. You can also remove this entirely if you don't want any drinks in there, which is kind of a nice feature. And then you just have like a big storage area. And then if you do want your drinks in there, you just push the bottom and then these spin out. We've got our wireless charging pad in here. And down here, we have a ton of storage, including this little strap. So if you wanna put something in there that you don't want to roll around, you can do that. Um, so overall, the interior, fantastic. One of the best that you can get on an electric vehicle right now. All right, so now let's get the AMG EQE out on the road. And we have a dual motor setup like you would get in a regular EQE, but we've got AMG specific electric motors on this car with adapted wing windings, laminations, higher currents, and a specific inverter. Basically, all you need to know is that you get more power. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna go ahead and put it into sport mode, sport plus mode, and you might be able to hear that the car has started humming. It's interesting, so Mercedes has decided that just because this is an electric car doesn't mean that it needs to be silent. This, is, this does still have to be an AMG despite not having a V8 engine. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a race start. It's very easy, foot on the brake, hard down on the accelerator, and let's watch what happens. Whoa! seatbelt tightened up like crazy did you hear that oh my god the seatbelt <laughs> that was zero to 60 in 3.2 seconds all right i've got to explain what happened there so the amg eqe is very powerful 617 horsepower and 701 pound feet of torque that is when you're driving around normally in sport plus mode but if you do the race start like i just did you get 110 percent boost power so that's going to give you 677 horsepower with the race start and the amg dynamic plus package which comes standard on us models in europe i think you have to add it as an additional package. And the torque goes up to 738 pound feet. So that's gonna get you from zero to 60 in 3.2 seconds. That is a really, really quick launch. And as you might've heard, as I mentioned, this car is not silent. It has something called the AMG sound experience. So you can configure that here on the screen. You get two different sound profiles. You can have authentic or you can have performance, which is what I just had. And then within that, you get different modes. You have balanced, sport, and powerful. Of course, in sport plus mode, you're gonna have powerful, which is like the loudest that it can be. So let me go ahead and switch it to authentic so that we can compare. Authentic is a little quieter. It's not quite as boisterous as performance sound is. So let's see what a launch control feels like now. All right, ready? Whoa! Oh, I think I like that one even better. <laughs> okay, so maybe I was wrong. Maybe authentic is actually the louder one. That sounded like the Starship Enterprise activating warp drive. That was so cool. I think I like that one even better. Oh my gosh. Did you hear it? We got it. We got to hear that again. Did you hear that? Listen to this. Engage. <laughs> okay, I think authentic definitely wins. That is the more funny of the two. And it stays on while you're driving. So when I floor it, you get that wah, wah. <laughs> you can turn it off and you can turn it down and everything. But I think if you're just wanting to like impress your friends and have fun, Oh, that's the way to do it. Okay, so authentic doesn't sound as loud when you're just mashing the throttle. So I just switched to performance. Now listen. Ooh. 
Okay, so that one sounds louder when you just kind of mash the throttle. <laughs> oh my God. All right, let's do one more of these race starts. Actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the race timer because we do have one of those here. So I'm gonna go into track pace. I'm gonna go to drag race and then it's going to count my zero to 60 for me. All right, let's see, I gotta stop that. I don't want that one. Okay. All right, let's see. What can I do zero to 60 in? Ready? Whoa. Oh, okay. Whew. Okay. Let's see what that was. The car counts it by itself. That was zero to 60 in 3.32. Okay. So on a sort of cool day, 3.3 seconds, I definitely believe Mercedes's claim that this car can do zero to 60 in just 3.2 seconds. Okay, so now let's slow down a little bit because whew, my, my brain is starting to hurt from all of that acceleration. So I should note that if you are wanting to do those race starts to get the full amount of performance out of this car, you do have to have 70% charge. And after a bunch of those, I just lowered my percentage by about 3% just doing those couple of launches. Uh, so you do have to have 70% to get that max uh, percentage. You do also have to be in Sport Plus mode. So one of the interesting things that this AMG EQE does is that it actually reduces the power when you're just driving around normal. Um, so we do have a slippery mode in case you're driving this car in the snow. That will reduce your power by 50%. So that's like a really big difference. You only have 308 horsepower in slippery mode. So actually what I'm gonna do is mute the audio because that came on for some reason. I'm gonna go ahead and put it into slippery mode. Now I'm gonna floor it. Let's see what happens. Oh yeah. Woo, yeah, you really feel the reduced power there. What you're normally gonna be driving around in is comfort mode. That is gonna give you 80% of this car's full power. So 494 horsepower. Let me floor it now. Oh God, wow. Wow, even with 80% power, this thing is ridiculous. And then if you dial it one more, you get sport mode. So that's 90% of your power. So 555 horsepower. And then if you put it into sport sport mode, or sport plus mode, sorry, you get 100% of the power, 617 horsepower. As I mentioned, you get the 110% power with the race start function. So it's kind of fun to play around with the different drive modes with the differing power. Very noticeable. Now, in terms of handling, we've got AMG's 4Matic Plus all-wheel drive system. As I mentioned, it's a dual motor system. We've got more powerful motors here on this AMG model. You also get AMG ride control, so that is adaptive suspension. It is not air suspension, but it is very comfortable. This is not like one of those AMG models that's going to beat the crap out of you. I think that some of the larger AMG models, like the EQS AMG, the S-Class AMG, those are sporty but they don't beat you up like something like a CLA or a C-Class would. So it is really nice here. And we do have rear axle steering, uh, which is very nice in terms of maneuverability, really helps you get this car around parking lots and different maneuvers very easily. Now, in terms of handling, you probably wanna know, is the AMG EQE a real AMG? Does it feel like a sports car? And I'm gonna go ahead and chuck it through a corner now. All right, we've got a little bit of body roll here, even in Sport Plus mode. I've got decent control through the wheel. I'm not getting a lot of feedback, but the, the, the steering wheel is pretty direct. Um, I do have pretty nice control over the front of the car. I think that the EQE AMG drives a lot better than the EQS AMG. The smaller wheelbase, the lighter curb weight, all of that means that I am enjoying myself a lot more in this car but I don't think that this is really like a sports car. It does feel very heavy. I do feel a lot of body roll out of it, even with the adaptive suspension. Brakes are good. Pretty nimble with the rear wheel steering and then the power. Oh, yeah, the power is not a problem, but does it handle as well as like an E63? Mm, definitely not. So if you're, <laughs> if you're looking for kind of like a Canyon Carver, this probably isn't it, but it is a really nice, very comfortable luxury sedan with insane acceleration. And now I wanna stop and talk about something that I usually don't spend a lot of time on, but that is deceleration. So this car has 
a carbon ceramic brake package. So you get six piston front calipers. It's $5,400. You need to upgrade to the larger 21 inch wheels that we have on this car to get the six piston brake calipers. They do their job great to stop such a big car. I'm gonna go ahead and slam on my brakes here. Oh, no fade, uh, no, no drama, just brings the car down to a really quick stop. But I don't think I would pay $5,000 to have carbon ceramic brakes on a car like this. I think that is a little bit silly. And now I wanna talk about the recuperation on this car. So the EQE is a little bit weird when it comes to that because I really like EVs that have one pedal drive. And this car does have that, but it took me a minute to find it. So if I'm going on here on the vehicle settings, I've got this creep function. So electric cars don't creep forward like a gasoline engine car with a transmission naturally. They have to be tuned to do that. So you can turn that off. Uh, you have to be in park, but you can turn the creep on or off so the car will either creep forward at a light or it won't. To make the car do one pedal driving the way that I like an EV to do, you must turn creep off first. So if you're used to a Tesla or a Chevy Bull or any other electric vehicle and you want it to function like that, turn creep off first. Now we've got the different recuperation settings here. So you can have no recuperation whatsoever. The car is just going to coast when you take your foot off the pedal. You've got normal recuperation, which is pretty light, or you've got strong recuperation. This is what I would really call one pedal driving. So with creep off and with strong recuperation, I'm gonna go ahead and take my foot off the gas. The car is going to slow down all the way to the point where it stopped. This is my favorite way to drive the EQE. I can do it with one pedal. I've got my foot on the, on the accelerator, taking it off. We're gonna slow down. It's easy. I know exactly how much the car is gonna slow down because this is repeatable. It's great. I have no problem with this. But Mercedes wanted to get clever for like no reason here. They have this intelligent recuperation mode that you can activate. And they should have called it unintelligent recuperation because I just don't get why you would want this. So basically when I take my foot off the throttle now, I'm just gonna coast because there's nothing in front of me. If it detects a car in front of me, it will regen slash use the regular brakes as much as it needs to to bring me to a stop. But you can never tell exactly by how much it's going to do it because it's predictive and it changes all of the time. And that scares the crap out of me. I never know if it's actually gonna bring me to a stop or not. So I just really have not wanted to use it during the week. The other weird part about this whole thing is that when I take my foot off, the physical brake pedal is moving right now. Like it, cause, it, cause it's braking. I don't know why Mercedes did that. No other EV besides a Mercedes does that. I've never experienced this before. When you take your foot off the throttle, the brake pedal physically moves so it's not where you expect it to be. I really hope that Mercedes gets customer feedback and they change that because it is a little bit annoying. And before we hop out of the AMG EQE, let's talk about range because this is something that a lot of people focus on with electric vehicles and there is a price to pay for all of this AMG speed. So all EQE models, regardless of power, all the way from the 350 plus up to this AMG model, get a 90.6 kilowatt hour usable battery pack. It's a little bit bigger than that, but that's what's the usable capacity. Now the AMG model, because it has these more powerful motors, because it has grippier, wider tires, you're only going to get 225 miles of range. That is the lowest of any available EQE on the market. The 350 Plus, which is a rear wheel drive version that has about 288 horsepower, that's gonna be the most, 305 miles. If you add all wheel drive to that or you step up to the e EQE 500, which also has all wheel drive, those can get 260 miles. Now, when I first charged this vehicle up to full, it was showing me about a 270 mile range. I've driven about 50 miles and I have about 200 left. 
So I think that this is a little under optimistic according to the EPA. I think you could probably get about 250 miles out of this, but if the same holds true for the regular ones, you could probably get about 280 miles out of the EQE 500. And I think that I'd much rather have that extra 40 miles of range than have the extra performance of this AMG model. Cause I bet you four and a half seconds to 60 on that EQE 500 model, that is gonna be quick enough for most people. And in terms of recharging, the EQE is quick, but not that quick. It can recharge at 170 kilowatts. Uh, just for reference, the EQS, the more expensive electric Mercedes that's larger and more S-Class size, that can do it at 200 kilowatts. So Mercedes says you'll add about 112 miles in 15 minutes. You can charge from 10 to 80% on a 350 kilowatt charger in about 32 minutes. I tested this and it does charge really quick. I think I plugged it into a 350 charger at about 35%. I got to 100 in under an hour, so it is pretty quick. If you're charging at home on a 240 volt wall box, um, it can do it in nine and a half hours. And the other thing that, that this car can do that I believe is really important to mention and stress is that it can thermally manage the battery. So if you plug in onto your GPS, any public charger, it will manage the battery temperature so that when you plug in, you're instantly going to get that peak charging speed. And when I plugged into the 350, I didn't even thermally manage the car. I did not navigate to that. It jumped to 162 kilowatts almost instantly. It took about 40 seconds to hit almost this car's peak. So I do believe that it's going to hit that peak very quickly and it is going to hold it for a really long time. So it might not have the fastest charging on the market compared to some of its competitors, but it does charge pretty decently quickly. It can also do eco charging. So if you are just charging at home every night, it can slow down the charge instead of charging quickly. And that is going to extend the battery life. It's gonna make sure that you keep that really good range for longer. It's gonna mean that you're not gonna to have to replace the batteries as quickly. So I think it is really important to note that Mercedes has taken those precautions here to make your life easier in terms of fast charging, but also increase the longevity of this electric vehicle's battery. All right, time to wrap up with how much the AMG EQE is going to cost you. This is not an inexpensive vehicle whatsoever. It is about $107,000 to start this model that we have with all of its available options is just over $123,000. So would I pay that? Maybe. It is slower than a Porsche Taycan, but it does have better range and a more luxurious interior. It's also more expensive than a Tesla Model S, um, and it's not as fast and it doesn't have as much range, but the interior is a much higher quality than the Tesla. Honestly, I'm not sure that I would get the AMG version of this car. I think I would just settle for one of the regular EQEs. The 350 Plus has the best range, over 300 miles, and you can get that one starting at just $75,000. The EQE 500 is $86,000. It gets you a lot more power and you still get 260 miles of range. So honestly, I think that is the way that I would go. Personally, let me know in the comments what you think of the AMG EQE. Do you think it's a good looking car? Would you buy it over the Porsche or the Tesla? Or would you just get a regular EQE without the AMG stuff? As always, if you've enjoyed this review, please like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to be alerted of our latest videos. And if you want to read more about the 2023 Mercedes AMG EQE, be sure to check out carbuzz.com. I'll see you next time.